I'm going to demonstrate the electroactivation of IPMC materials, as you can see here. IPMC stands for Ion Polymer Metallic Composite. These uh, ribbons were supplied to us by Dr. Moshin Shahanpur of Environmental Robots. He is also a professor at University of Maine and a well-known authority on this type of material. The voltage is applied with a laboratory uh, benchtop DC supply. It's adjustable from 0 to 60 volts and can put out whatever current is needed. It's highly regulated supply. Uh, but to make sure that we don't overload the material, the output of the supply is going through this uh, resistive uh, step-down network. Uh, we have a uh, 1,000 ohm in series with 100 ohm. So we have about, about a 10 times step down uh, to make sure that we're safe. We have a piece of IPMC, which is right here. It's a flat, like, ribbon type uh, piece. It's about one centimeter in length. And on each of its faces, we have these copper electrodes. On this side, we apply a variable voltage from 0 to 1 volt, DC, and on this side, ground. And note the scale. It's above the ribbon. It, the tick marks are in millimeters. So I'm now going to apply a uh, 1 volt to the uh, right-hand face. I'll slowly ramp it up, and we'll watch it move. Let's put the 1 volt applied, and it's staying there. We leave the 1 volt. Now I'm going to ramp it down. So as you can see, the end of the ribbon moved about 1 millimeter, and that's with only 1 volt applied. Here's another shot of the experimental setup. Here we have the uh, voltmeter and the ribbon over here. Again, I'm going to uh, ramp it up to 1 volt. Note, we're using the 3 volt scale, so 1 volt would be about there. I'm ramping it up. Obviously, since we're, not, we're a little bit further away with the camera from the ribbon, you can't see it move as well. But it is moving. You may ask, why don't I ramp the voltage up past the volt? The reason is I'm reluctant to because uh, the material can get damaged. The ions somehow within the material get messed up, and uh, internally the material can get damaged. So given the scarcity of the samples that I have, I'm very reluctant to do that, although I suspect with a a little bit more, maybe one and a half, two volts, the piece would move even further. We've now reversed the leads. That is, the positive zero to one volt is now on this side, and the ground is on this side here. So let's see what happens. I'm going to ramp it up to one volt now applied to the left side. One volt. Now the back down to zero. Ramping it up to one volt, down to zero. I'm now going to ramp it a little faster. And now I'm going to shut it off. One volt. Here we go. Up and then down. Up and then down. So, yeah, it, it does take time to respond. That's that's a given. But the important observation here is that by reversing the polarity, we reverse the direction of the movement. We're now going to look at the current going through the material. We have the power supply, which is going through a DC ammeter. 
goes to the ammeter and then to the positive zero to one volt side and then uh, the current goes through the ribbon and then to ground on this side here. So I'm going to, like before, apply the zero to one volt on the left side and we'll watch the meter. So I'm now going to move the camera to the meter. We're using the three milliamp scale. That's this one. So one milliamp would be at about there. So here we go. I'm going to ramp it up to uh, about one volt. You can see the uh, current pops up fairly quickly and then ramps down. We still have the one volt applied. So like before, the piece is not moving, but as the ion uh, flow stabilizes, the current drops. I'm now going to remove the voltage. And as you can see, the currents to compensate move in the opposite direction and pin the meter in the other direction. And uh, the only way I can break that uh, either is to wait or to uh, disconnect the uh, leads. We're going to do it again. I'm going to ramp it up to about uh, one volt. And let's watch the current flow. I'll leave it at one volt for about five seconds and then I'll shut it off. One volt. And as you can see, the current pops almost to three milliamps. Now it comes down. This time it's a little different. So now I'm going to, uh, remember we still have the voltage on, now I'm going to shut it off. And now we have this counter EMF. Perhaps the thing is acting like a battery at this point. Just to show that nothing's changed, um, I'm now going to just put a one volt ramp on it. Here we go. And now I'm going to remove the voltage. And we have the one millimeter excursion. This, by the way, is with the meter, the ammeter in series with the ribbon for the current measurement. So here's the setup. We're at uh, the rest position, which is right there. Watch when we apply one volt. I'm going to leave it for about uh, 10 seconds. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can see that there is a downward drift in the position of the material. I'm now going to shut off the voltage. And everything shifted over a little bit. And uh, so there is some movement. You can see it's uh, possibly moving slightly back to the uh, left again to the rest position. So when the voltage is applied uh, and removed, the uh, position of the ribbon does shift. And eventually it gets back to its rest position. Okay, I'm gonna get a little riskier and apply more than one volt. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna ramp it up. That's, here's two volts. So now we have a substantial excursion of about four millimeters, almost five. And you can see it's, it is headed back a little bit. And now we're going to shut off the voltage. Voltage is off and it eventually returns to its rest position with a slight offset. And if we leave it off long enough, it will then move back toward the left again and reach approximately the home position that we started with. You can see it's starting to move back. And it, 
it's now hitting the uh, rest position that we started with. So there is clearly a drift in the material or the position of the material uh, after the voltage is applied and then removed. How much of uh, impact that will have on our experiment, I don't know yet, but it's something that we need to consider.